October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So joining us in today's leading essay segment is Dr. Shreda Dewaldi, a breast radiolog radiation oncologist with UT Health San Antonio MD Anderson Cancer Center. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. Thank you for having me today. Thank you for joining us this morning. First and foremost, what are some of the big risk factors of breast cancer that people watching should know about? Women of older age who are smokers, obesity, use of any hormone pills, any family history of breast or ovarian cancer, getting pregnant at a later age or never having been pregnant and never having breastfed are some of the risk factors that increase your chance of being diagnosed with breast cancer. And we often talk about the importance of getting tested. So when and how often should someone get a mammogram? There are many recommendations out there, but in general, all women over 40 should discuss getting a mammogram with their physician. If you have a family history of breast cancer or other risk factors like previous radiation, you should discuss even sooner getting a mammogram. There's two types of mammograms. One of them is a 2D mammogram, which is standard of care, a very good option, and it takes pictures of the breast from the front and side. Um, if you have that available, it's a good option, like I said, and can help screen and diagnose breast cancers early. But a newer option is tomosynthesis or a 3D mammogram. It takes pictures at extra angles and can help detect cancers, which are harder to find with a 2D mammogram. But it can also help determine normal lesions, which are called as possibly cancerous on a 2D mammogram. So if you have that available, you should ask for it. So Dr. Dwaldi, you mentioned earlier one of the risk factors is any hormonal treatment. Does that include uh, birth control pills? I've heard so many different things. Some, some studies saying birth control actually can uh, decrease your risk and some saying it actually increases. Yes, so there's many different types of breath, uh, birth control. Some of them block two types of hormones and some of them only block one type of hormone. You should discuss what type of hormones are blocked and whether or not it decreases your risk of breast cancer when you begin taking birth control. Or if you've taken birth control in the past, you should know the exact type of birth control you've taken when de discussing your risk for breast cancer with your physician. Okay, so I've also seen a lot of different things on social media, including TikTok. Um, does wearing a tight constricting bra, like a sports bra, cut off lymph drainage and lead to cancer later in life? And are wearing certain bras better to prevent cancer? That's an interesting thought, and I haven't seen any definitive data that supports anything one way or another. If a patient came in with this concern, I would make sure that I want get a really good physical exam and um, understand their other risk factors before making a recommendation about screening. So if you have any concerns, whether it's wearing a certain type of bra, um, your lymph drainage, and how that relates to breast cancer, you should definitely discuss it with your physician. Overall, I would say the data is not strong for any type of bra causing breast cancer. Now we talked about some of the risks. Uh, how can women lower the risk of getting breast cancer? So some basic principles are to eat healthy and nutritious food, exercise, and keep your weight at a healthy level. Limit your alcohol intake as excessive alcohol use has been associated with breast cancer. Um, visit your doctor for regular examination and make sure that you're getting your mammograms as soon as you qualify. All right, I've also, you know, a lot of women are doing genetic testing now and counseling. So how does a woman become a candidate? So first of all, your primary care doctor and your ob -GYN are a good place to start. They can provide some basic counseling and understand your personal risk factors and how that contributes to breast cancer. Um, many women also qualify for formal genetic counseling, especially if they're diagnosed on an abnormal screening mammogram with breast cancer. So young patients, hormone negative patients, those with a family history of either breast or ovarian cancer, those um, patients generally do qualify for formal genetic counseling, often blood testing, and this can help them discuss with their siblings or their children their further risk um, down the road. And last question for you, doctor, what does radiation for breast cancer usually involve? So radiation is a non-invasive treatment that follows surgery and further decreases the risk of the cancer coming back in the breast and the lymph nodes. 
Um, what type of radiation you get really depends on the type of surgery that you get and the results of that surgery. And women are recommended anything between no radiation or one to six weeks of radiation. And there are many modern techniques now developed within the last five to 10 years that allow us to give shorter courses of radiation and protect normal structures like the heart and the lungs. Um, women can continue to work, exercise, and live their normal lives. Um, so it's a great option after you receive your definitive surgical treatment for further decreasing your risk of the cancer coming back. Well, Dr. Shreda Dwaldi, thank you so much for your time this morning. Lots of great, really important information. Of course, we'll have all of this and the full interview on our website, ksat.com, later this morning. Thank you, doctor.